Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. I'm trying to, uh, got shorts and sandals on, so I'm just trying to not show that. But uh, anyway, um, <coughs> pretty good day. Well, kind of a little disappointing. So uh, I've fulfilled all the domestic um, backers for Iron Sights, and now it's nothing but international backers. The problem is that uh, doing the old stamps.com postage takes a lot longer. For the domestic ones, you can just highlight the entire uh, address, copy and paste it into one giant field. But with the, all of the international ones, you have to go, here's the name, here's the street address, here's the province, here's this, this, that. And then, like, they have to have a phone number, and it has to be a phone number correct for the country. Like, I only got 40 done today. That's pathetic. I'm trying to get it to at least 64, which would be two boxes per day. I got, like, 19 boxes left. Um, but, uh, anyway, uh, getting into uh, comic book review, Heroes in Crisis. Uh, uh, this just came out this week. A lot of people were asking me my opinions about it yesterday. I had seen one page floating around on Twitter, and I was just like, nope, 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 nope. And this goes back to my thing about Tom King just fundamentally not understanding Batman's character at all. He thinks Batman is a, just a regular guy. <laughs> and he thinks the regular guy is squeamish and afraid and uh, neurotic and nervous and he bats basically how he portrays most of the men, I would say. Um, uh, the women tend to be kind of stoic uh, but the, the men tend to just, just get out the emotion hose, just spray everyone down. I'm having emotions all the time. So we start off here with a uh, well done cover. Something about this face makes me think of Graham Nolan. But um, uh, at one point, I'm just looking at the art, which is astounding. Uh, but there's some problems to it. <laughs> um, are they trying to say that when Bane broke Batman's back, that there was a camera right above him? that perfectly framed him. Eh, I know it's kind of like a convention, but it's like, and then it's like part of the file. Um, this, uh, this story probably has, now I've ragged on, you know, uh, the superhero team is on a reality show. I think things are about to get real. Oh yeah. Like I've ragged about how silly and outdated it is to do reality show as, you know, as a framing device for a series. But I have to pause and have to do that thing where you put your fingers to the bridge of your nose. Oh, I'm going to explain this. Heroes in Crisis revolves around something called Sanctuary, which is a uh, robot-run farmhouse psychiatry clinic. God, that was stupid. That, I think th this is, you know what this kind of is? It's one of those, like, 1950s Superman stories. It's basically like, we're all uh, turning into babies. <laughs> like, what is this? Um, oh my god. It's, it's, it's even more embarrassing when you say it out loud. So, what we get is uh, we, this is, it's almost kind of like a reality show thing. They're looking at the camera and they're talking. They're talking to a I'm just going to show you Clark's description. A therapy computer. That's right. Does anyone see the massive problems about having a centralized place where all superheroes go to to spill their secrets to a computer? Does anyone see there's a couple of vulnerabilities there? Wow. Uh, so then she's talking, and uh, I, I'm not sure how to... I'm going to describe this as semi-in-world cosplay. By that I mean the people are superheroes or supervillains, but like they also know that's like a thing and like supervillains and like science. So I'll, I'll give an example of how they talk. So Poison Ivy is right there and she's just kind of just staring straight at the camera. It's like, obviously I shouldn't be here. You're made for heroes. I'm a terrorist. I fight Batman with vines and kisses. 
I don't know how to explain why that seems wrong, but it seems very wrong. So then, silly Billy time. Oh my God, Harley, love her. She's in the same booth, and she pops up, and it's we get some silly talk. She's she's booping her on her chin. I'm going to boop you again. Sigh. I know. Uh, and then we cut to a bunch of penguins watching her. She goes talks to the penguin. Um, the, the, the crazy thing about this is the, the premise is stupid. The execution is not very good. But the art, the art is finger burst time. It's so much better, not just than almost everything and possibly everything out on the stands right now, but it is better than almost all art in the history of comics. Like, it's staggering in every uh, panel. But I just kept drawing, get, kept getting drawn out by the thing that draws you out. This, like, semi-cosplay. It's like, you're like Batman, and that's like a thing. So she's like a you know, I don't. Bruce, how many times have we stopped this? You're Batman. You know. Because Batman knows everything and he can do everything. Finger burst time. Batman is a guy who uh, stops people stealing TVs. Coming out of a fire escape. <laughs> Let's dial it back. Let's dial it way back. They've basically elevated Batman to a point that it makes absolutely no sense. He calls himself Batman or ever dresses in this costume. He's just a super genius who's great at everything, predicts everything, has contingency plans for everything. I really like Grant Morrison, but he really started this and it's 20 years later and it needs to stop. So, um, then he starts talking, or I think this is, uh, I can't tell who this is. Sanctuary is anonymous. This allows heroes to talk about their pain and shame. All information ga gathered by sanctuary is immediately deleted. Excuse me, I have a question. Excuse me, I have a question. Yes, right here. Why would you immediately delete information? <laughs> Why would you store it at all to immediately delete it? Now, what I think you mean is that after the therapy session, it's immediately d deleted. But that's not what you said. Um, and also, nobody... Nobody in these times of how many times a year do you go to your do you go to your mailbox and head target? Hey, sorry, we lost all your information. The DOD. Hey, all your stuff's out there. Everything's out there. Sorry, sorry. And that's like your address and your credit card number. You really think superheroes are going to go to one place in the 2018 of the, the, the DC universe and just tell all their secrets to a computer? It's stupid. Who comes, what they say, when they leave. Everything is erased. Nothing is reported. So then they basically say, uh, Hey, Bruce, you built a back door to spy on our weakness. It's what you do. You prepare for if any of us turn. You probably have kryptonite hidden in your belt. Guess what he does? Plot twist. Um, this is does describe aspects of the Grant Morrison Especially the Scott Snyder, who's there's just contingency man. And not only contingency man, but not only is, does he know everything, but it was predicted that he would know everything 300 years ago in a cave that no one's ever been to. Whatever. Um, so uh, the thing about this is, like I said, they're doing a thing. Now, Mission Impossible franchise, which I love, has had aspects of doing this. The first um, movie, Ethan Hunt, is just a junior member of the team. It's kind of like, like a scrub. In the second one, he's Mr. Cool, basically a superhero, and he gets to choose everything. But he still needs a team. Uh, third one, he's in training. He's called back. The fourth one, he's in deep cover. The fifth one, he accepts a regular mission. But in the fifth one, they actually really started to point out how many things Ethan has done. And it's kind of weird that he's so good at everything. To, to which, you know, two things. Uh, director Hunley? Alec Baldwin. He says something like, you know, Ethan, Ethan Hunt is the living embodiment of fate. He basically says, if, he, if Ethan Hunt says he's going to do something, it's going to happen. You can run, you, you can run, but you're just going to die tired, as they say. Uh, there's even a good part where Benji, where they're planning this really ridiculous uh, dive into an underwater uh, server farm, essentially. And uh, uh, 
everything they're saying that's so impossible. Benji's just saying, oh, you can do that. You can hold your breath for five minutes. And the, and the, but the good thing is they cut to Ethan, and, and he looks scared. He's like, what the hell? Ever, ever, people just think I could do everything. And then, plot twist, from four years ago, whenever it came out, uh, he dies. He He's not successful. He dies and he drowns. Now, he does get saved by a really great uh, a character, but he dies. They set him up for the fall. He did so many incredible things that finally they had to point out how incredible he was, and then he failed and died. This is really, really good storytelling stuff. Um, and you just kind of ruin it with this, like, um, you're the Batman, you like know, like, everything. <laughs> and you're always, like, super secret -y. And we know you're, you got kryptonite, and you do. Like, stop it, stop it. Um, so then we get this, and this is the page I was making fun of. So Batman, if I didn't miss anything, either created Sanctuary or discovered it. Uh, and then he comes in, and like he's like super dramatic. He takes off his, his mask, and uh, th that's finger purse. <laughs> Number three finger purse. Why is it necessary to take your mask off? I know you say it might be more freeing, but also, why are you giving therapy to a computer that you probably built and programmed? <clears throat> okay. So, uh, and the thing is, you say, oh, maybe he created an artificial intelligence. Well, yeah, if I remember correctly from the previous issue, they found the robots that manned this thing and they were broken. And no one was like, oh my gosh, a living thing is dead. They're just like, oh, that robot's broken. Well, that sucks. Um, so, again, they keep doing this thing where people have a catharsis on, like, the same panel almost. I train partners to work with me. They become my family. I've watched so many of them die. I'm sorry. That was pretty quick. <laughs> if psychotherapy was like this, uh, therapists would charge by the five minute increment oh they're like okay we're three and a half minutes you've had a catharsis and you've come to a realization and here's your here's your prescription well that'd be a psychiatrist but um this is stupid like i said this is how psychiatry and therapy was presented in like sitcoms in the 1970s so then we got this thing where so the plot of it is either booster gold or harley quinn killed a bunch of people except for booster gold Gold almost seems more likely because he's completely flippant about how he might have killed people. He just kind of wakes up. He's like, well, it's either me or Harvey. That's pretty weird. Uh, then we cut to this thing where Harvey takes out the Trinity, the core members of the Justice League. Yes, she takes out freaking Wonder Woman by distracting her with a hug. Stealing the freaking... Lariat of Truth, whatever the hell it's called, and then roping and capturing and using Batman as a hostage. Okay, just blah, blah, blah. why don't you just punch Superman's head off? Finger person number four. What is this? Harley Quinn is a fantastic character. I was watching uh, Honest Trailers and they did Batman the Animated Series, and they were talking about how basically they did like the best version of tons of characters and they created you know Harley she's not OP male Deadpool she's a really rich character but she's a tragic character she's a gangster's mall who fell in love with a serial killer and thinks he's amazing she thinks he's Prince Charming that's where everything comes from when you turn her into male Deadpool the only thing she is, is male Deadpool. She's not tragic. She's not deep. She's not a good character. She's just annoying as hell. And the idea that she could take out the Trinity is stupid. Um, so then she leaves because she just wanted to send them a message. Um, so I don't know if it's, it's, this is adjusting her tear or crying, but they all cry within like six to, no, five to eight panels. Uh, then we get the thing here where again, Hate this. So the deal with Booster Gold is, if you're just coming in late, you just probably think he's this hipster idiot. But he's actually a pretty interesting character. He was a guy who wanted to be a celebrity, so he basically said, "If I'll take future technology of the past, everyone will think I'm amazing." And they kind of did. He became a good C-lister. 
he's done some pretty interesting stuff. If I remember correctly, he actually took on Doomsday briefly by himself before Doomsday killed Superman. He was kind of a goofball, but he was solidly a hero and an adult. And like, I'm going to show you how he talks. Flash, man, I'm so sorry to interrupt. So on this sanctuary thing, I'm doing what Batman would do, or what I'm like 63% sure he would do. Anyway, I was wondering if you've done the autopsies yet. So he's fighting, I don't know who these are, samurai or something. He's like, so he just says, what are you talking about? He goes, oh, clues and stuff are not usually my deal. Just trying to figure out where to start. And I was thinking, the bodies. But what do I know about bodies? But Flash, that dude knows all about bodies. And science, you're from the future. Yeah, I know, you weren't an inventor, you're just kind of like a regular guy. You're from the future. Also, nobody talks like this except for on Twitter. If this was written five years ago, he would have said, Hey, Flash, I'm in trouble. And I think I might have killed some people. I'm not sure. You're a forensic scientist. Can you help me out? He would have talked like that. He would have talked like a person who has human... He's like, um, you're like super sciencey, And like, I totes might have killed people. Like, uh, oopsies. Hashtag oopsies. Like, shut up. I hate you. I hope you did it. Luckily... Flash gets tired of his ass and just clocks him, so I'm not going to show the rest of it. Stupid premise. <laughs> An uh, automated robot psychiatry farmhouse. Oh, guess what? It went bad and everything's stupid and nothing matters. But, uh, oh, this is, uh, it's got that flat thing, but it's got the laminated uh, cover, so let me use my super strength. I'm as strong as Harley Quinn. I can do anything. It actually wasn't that limited. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the Patreon, the uh, Indiegogo, and the GoFundMe. You're funding original content, or in my opinion, a good cause. And I will have uh, more new comic reviews up later tonight. Thanks. Bye.